Today I want to talk about Black Lives Matter. I want to talk about it because I know that the audit came out today. The audit for Black Lives Matter came out and I read some of the headlines and it was disturbing because I'm a big supporter of Black Lives Matter. And it's been disturbing to watch the media attack them, accusing them of buying houses with the money for themselves, which turned out even before the audit, they said they agreed that the only thing they did at those houses that was inappropriate was have a baby shower and a party for uh, Joe Biden. And... Uh, but that was not with Joe Biden, but a party really inappropriate in a way to have a party for Joe Biden at Black Lives Matter, even though he was a big supporter. And the other thing, the baby shower for a woman who worked for maybe eight years for free for an idea and a vision that she had, and then she had a baby shower. So she didn't, not, it was not her house, the houses, two houses that they bought after they uh, got a hundred million dollars in donations. So they got a hundred million dollars in donations and like any church or any foundation, they bought equity in places that would be useful to the building and a foundation. So the house in Toronto, where there's a huge movement, the Black Lives Matter house is a museum and a workshop and they do podcasts, they do what they do and that's Black Lives Matter in Toronto. And the other house in L.A. has 30 parking spots and is also meant to be for those same purposes. No one lives there. The only people that own it are the people who invested in Black Lives Matter. The houses are owned by Black Lives Matter, the foundation. All right, so that was, that's been cleared up before the audit. Now, the audit comes out, and it was determined that there was investments made in independent um, businesses run by family members. If you knew any better, you knew better. You know, like I know better. I've run 10 foundations. I've been the chairman of so many charities. I know all about that shit, so I know better. But <clears throat> if someone worked for free with you to start the foundation for years, and then there's money and you hired them to continue to do and expand of your six of you, and there's a hundred million dollars come in. And you take some of that money and you pay some of the people who've worked for you and with you for a lot of years to hire more people to build out a bigger platform for what you have been doing. And it seems to me we have to look at that because it's inappropriate. You don't hire family and friends if you can help it. So those are mistakes. But what did they do? How many new black Congress people do we have? What about a new black vice president? What about Supreme Court judge? What about corporate changes? Changes in corporate policy all over the country. What about police redirecting and redistributing funds to anti-violence programs in the communities where they were doing a poor job policing? New policies by police. So, <clears throat> of the $100 million, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking there's about $65 million still available. There's a complete audit of what they've done with the other money. I think that they do anything they can to demonize any independent black movement. You ever see that many white people march for the liberation of black people? Now, maybe what they did was so inappropriate, we got to throw them out. In fact, the woman, she resigned right away. Patrice resigned year, a year and a half ago. I think, the, I think it's a year and a half, and I don't know her well. I've only spoken to her three times on the phone, and I've read about her. And she doesn't know a lot of people. She was a visionary, an artist, a creator of Black Lives Matter, but she doesn't know, like, all the civil rights people I know. Like, she's not friendly with Ben Chavis and... Tamika Mowry and Reverend Jackson and Reverend Sharp. I mean, I know all those people. She doesn't know any of them, really. So I called around, and I called some of our sisters and brothers in the movement 
Like, we don't know. We don't like that they didn't give money to hood. I said, what money didn't they give to what hood? I think we have to look at the audit before we judge our system and judge that foundation. When you see that many white people marching with black people, you got to wonder, what does this mean? How threatening is this? To the, to the infrastructure and, the, and the, that holds us down. So I, for one, want to hold off my judgment of Black Lives Matter. I don't want to threaten to, I don't want to threaten to kill them as Candace brings people, Candace brought people to the house of the woman Patrice and said it was the house bought by Black Lives Matter, but it was not a house bought by Black Lives Matter. Yes, she profited, she became, her artistry, she got funded by Warner Brothers to do her own thing. It was part of her leaving the foundation. Now she's always wanted to be an artist and now she's got a production deal, I think it is. What did they do for how many years to build what turned into the biggest explosion of black of sentiment about the suffering of black people all over the world? In Germany, they march for black lives. In Sweden, they march for black lives. In the whitest towns in America, they was out in the street marching for black lives. And I marched, I remember Nas and I was marching in the street in New York and 80% of the people were white. That's scary. In Africa, Germany, Sweden, in every country in this world, Black Lives Matter rang a bell. And there were policies changed and there were processes put in place to uplift black people. And corporations, someone said, well, the corporations promised all this money, but some of them didn't pay. Well, you need Black Lives Matter to make them pay. If they committed, you don't want to throw out the baby with the hot water. That's how it goes. Maybe we have to put new people in place. We can't let them destroy this movement by attacking the leader for, for, for maybe stupid, maybe young choices, but not illegal. And they didn't profit. Patrice never got paid. The woman who founded it never got paid anything for working for Black Lives Matter. Personally, never took a nickel. So that, to me, means that she, her intentions were good. And uh, it was new to them. $100 million, put $100 million in six people, six, um, what do you call them? Six idealist hands. <laughs> you laugh and don't throw the baby out with Yeah, it's true. Baby with the bathwater, right? But, you know, let's please not destroy Black Lives Matter because we don't like or stop donating to black foundations because they... You have to look at other foundations. Would they buy a house if they had $100 million that, that became a service space for the creatives and for the activists, office space, and podcast studios and other workshops that they have retreats there. Say, oh, why, why did Black Lives Matter have a house in Studio City instead of in the ghetto? I said 80% of the people supporting them at one point were white. And plus, black people can't have nothing nice. The house is nice. It's got 25 or 30 parking spaces. And for that money, I don't even know how it's possible to have a house of that size. But the intention was clear, and the intention that's realized already in the one in Toronto is clear. I just don't want us to let them help us demonize them. Black Lives Matter is a huge idea, and there were some heroes involved in starting it, and they're being demonized and they're being judged. But I think we should look at the research and the, the um, report and I think that they're trying to promote radical transparency so you can see everything. Don't let the media and don't let the right wing media especially destroy your view of our sister and and we don't and if you don't like our sister who's left the foundation already under duress or if you don't like some of the people who were there in the, in the beginning they're still sitting on 65 million dollars. What black foundation do you know has that kind of money? And it's not controlled by a corporation. Funded by the people 
and the intention is for the people. Shit, maybe to make a Maori can run it. But, or be a big part of it. Maybe the steering board can be changed. Maybe the board of directors can be changed. Let's not let them destroy it. That's just my opinion. And I'm going to keep pushing that opinion. And I'm going to study the report now that it's out. They did put money in a lot of black foundations across this country. They did fund a lot of marches, create a lot of movement, and change a lot of things in this country. They were the nucleus of um, a lot, a lot of progress for black people. And I just don't want to be destroyed. All right, that's my opinion. I'm gonna probably post this and it'll stay there and maybe they'll judge me for, for this, but you can't judge me. I'm already, what the fuck are you gonna do to me? <laughs> what can you really do to me? I, but I don't like that a lot of, I call to be civil rights leader on the planet. They're like, well, let us see. I said, well, what? You know, all of us come together, all the civil rights leaders and all the people who work so hard for the liberation of black people should look at this. Well, I spoke to Minister Baraton and uh, he likes that I'm, you know, I have enough courage to do this. And uh, he doesn't, because a lot of the funding people are not from our community and may be threatened by his involvement. But our people need to support this movement and this foundation and try to build it up and make it continue to do the good work that it's already done. If you want to make it more efficient, we'll make it more efficient. Let's not kill it. Namaste, yogis, and everyone listening. I hope that this message uh, is received well. And I hope that it sparks some support, some nurturing from our community for that foundation and for the future of, of, of black people uh, that is tied to movements like this. Namaste.